Vinny, episode 390 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by First Down Scouting, delivering the most thorough scouting service available, uncovering the NFL stars of tomorrow. Follow them on the web at the number one stdownscouting.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the FDH Lounge. Rick Morris and Kyle Ross, we are your FDH Lounge dignitaries. Looking back at the end of the 2013 NFL season, ahead to 2014 to see to glean what we can learn from that. And I know from talking to Kyle briefly off air, and we've saved the meat of this for on air so we can respond properly in a spontaneous fashion. I think we're definitely going to disagree on this. I have the division winner once again as the Cincinnati Bengals, this time at 10 and 6 down from. 11 and 5 but again yeah I watched the playoff game to answer the hypothetical question that you all are posing to me right now in the audience yes I watched it but again Cincinnati with that defense presumably at full strength this year best team in the division even with Andy Dalton there and since Andy Dalton plays his worst football in January I'm saying they're going to make it back there in that position although again if they run into a rough spot during the year do they turn away from him the only thing is like they're not going to bring in anybody that's a bona fide right do his job because how many people like that exist in the league if they do I think it'll be like John Kitna circa 04 you know when they had him in there with uh, Carson Palmer it might be somebody on that level who can possibly step in but I think with Andy Dalton with the same defense they make it back to the playoffs and then it's rinse wash repeat when they get bounced by a better team that has a real quarterback that's that's my take and I guess from what you indicated to me yours is completely different okay so we're going to start with Cincinnati then I guess so okay all right we're going to start with Cincinnati because there's two teams I think we're going to be wildly different okay. in this division. Cincinnati's one of them. With, first of all, before the year, I said they'd be 11-5. and five. They finished 11-5. and five. Okay. As you know, I'm glad we said the Cincinnati, actually. Yeah. That seems right that they won the division last yes. year. Yes. I was very high on this team at this point last year. And going into the year, I was very high on this team. And going into the playoffs, I was very high on this team. So, considering what you just said and what I'm about to say, pretty interesting. I think this team is headed for some serious regression. Serious? In 2014, yes. Wow. Okay. I have jokingly in the past on this program and also to friends referred to teams like Atlanta and Houston as the pavement and the guided by voices of the NFL. Critics fans, fans that, you know, you look at them, they do everything right, but no real big breakthrough success. Okay. Cincinnati, I believe, is about to become Elliott Smith. (laughs) Okay. I, too, watched the playoff game, a playoff game I thought they would win, and then I foolishly on our wild card preview shoes preview show said Cincinnati could go on and beat New England in New England they didn't even get a chance because they lost to San Diego at home after running the table in the regular season I think that outside of Dalton this team is very talented but they're a lot like the Falcons Texans even Jets I'll throw in before them and I don't mean that as compliments in that the rest of the roster is going to look at the quarterback position and say we can't win with this and it's look the drop off with Houston was almost unprecedented what happened how, yes. because their quarterback play got so bad it just destroyed the team this could be more like the Jets I think mm-hmm. with Sanchez where okay they don't completely fall off the map but they lose faith in them here's another thing too with Cincinnati this time last year I said they caught a real break because they retained both coordinators yeah Jay Gruden and Mike Zimmer lost them guess both. what they're both gone now yeah I think this team could possibly fall all the way down to seven wins and I definitely think they will miss that oh okay all I right. definitely think the Cincinnati Bengals will miss the playoffs and at this time next year we will be asking ourselves who is the next Cincinnati Bengals quarterback going to be because it's not Andy no it's not I I almost think that they they're not gonna do it in the first round the first round will probably get one of the cornerbacks I know that this cornerback draft is pretty deep Mm -hmm. and there's expected to be a run on them round spot they pick the high 20s or two or three of them are supposed to go in a row Kid from Michigan State is very good, uh, Denard. But maybe in the later rounds, they might want to look at picking up a quarterback. I don't know if that means anything because I don't think they're going to be so bad that next year they're going to be one of these high spots to get a Jameis Winston, a Mariota, right. or you know Brett Hundley, who everyone's salivating over at this point. I just think that it's over for Andy Dalton. I watched that game. That This guy, you know who he is, and he's just not a top-20 quarterback. See, I guess where I disagree on that is that I don't expect the kind of serious regression from him that we saw saw from Mark Sanchez 
because I think Sanchez was somebody who had, if this makes any sense at all, a higher ceiling as far as what he could be versus, to me, Andy Dalton. Yeah, he he is and he has become the choking ginger, but you've also got a deal where he, he, he sort of, he's always been he is what he is from day one. In the playoffs, he falls back from that, but Sanchez, I think, had a higher ceiling and a lower floor, so... Dalton, I don't expect him to reach that level of alienating his teammates with his performance of the regular season because, again, that's never been where his problem is. He does run into stretches where he, he plays poorly. If you remember, it was about midseason. He had that stretch where a lot of NFL analysts embarrassed themselves by saying, Oh, my God, Andy Dalton has turned the corner. You probably oh remember that. Yes, yes. Yes. I will say this. In the 20 years before Andy Dalton, mm-hmm. what, this franchise made the playoffs with once? It was the year well, that... Uh, Carson Palmer, who's that? Who's that Kimo guy? Von yes, Kimo von yeah. Olhoff, and you yeah. know, clipped the knee yeah. of Carson Palmer. So, and they've made it three years in a row now. That's, yeah. I mean, tip your cap. But doesn't that sound like a lot like Atlanta again? Let's go back to the critics fans of the okay. NFL. Atlanta before the Mike Smith, Matt Ryan regime showed up, for lack of a better term, I'll mm-hmm. just call it a regime. They had never won back, but would they? I don't think they ever had back-to-back winning years at franchise Atlanta. They've they won least eight games i think four straight years then Mm -hmm. but they didn't really have anything to show for it and and i kind of just think the bengals peaked last year i just don't see them getting any better anymore and sometimes young parts on that defense so do i but you know there was a lot to like i mean atlanta's kind of different than today in because atlanta and and even houston and the jets the other teams are in atlanta everyone loves the quarterback it's Mm -hmm. the defense that stinks right but you know there's there were always lots of there were lots of reasons like the jets defense with sanchez or houston's defense with shaw and it just we've seen it before some of these times we're like yeah they'll be okay sometimes the bottom just drops out man and i'm not saying cincinnati's gonna be like a four-win team certainly way too much talent there i do not see them as a playoff team Very right interesting. now. Well, see, and this look, is coming from a guy who loved them last year. You know that. I look at Atlanta, and my first thought on that is, and, and again, and I, I've been a big Atlanta guy the last couple of years, but I knew going into last year, a predominantly finesse offense team, a defense that even I as an Atlanta guy wouldn't have said going into last year was going to scare anybody. So on paper, not the most shocking thing in the world, but then again, I turned my attention to Houston where the, the strength really was defense. They had a pretty good offense, a world-class defense, so if you're looking for anything to shore up your point of view, I suppose it would be what happened to Houston. Nevertheless, with that defense, you know, I suppose as Curtis Axel would say, the rest of the division is looking for linebacker play that is better than perfect. <laughs> but uh, I do think that Cincinnati is going to be uh, at the top again. I've got both teams following them at 9-7, and seven, both up from 8-8 eight and eight a year ago, and both in the wild card spots. Maybe I'm just stubborn because I picked them for the wild cards last year. I was very close to being right on the Ravens. I'm saying the Ravens at nine and seven, the Squealers at nine and seven. Again, nobody can say as a Browns fan I am anything but uh, impartial on my picks. I just think it's going to be another one of these situations where you have a bunch of close teams in the grid at the end of the season. Eight and eight, nine and seven, they're all there. I just give the edge to Baltimore and Pittsburgh more or less based on experience. I think they're both going to be due back at that point after a down year. That's been their pattern in recent years, although Baltimore, we haven't even really seen this from in the John Harbaugh era. It's the first time they actually missed the playoffs in the Tomlin era as much as again I as a fan would like to say otherwise the Steelers have never stayed down long they have an aging core it could be different this time but I'm giving the nod to uh, both of them there chances are you agree disagree with me more on Baltimore from what you said off air and everything I've said for the last two years yes. about Baltimore as you know I am no fan of the Baltimore Ravens mm-hmm. now let's go back here uh before last year started I said Pittsburgh would be nine and seven and make the wild card they finished eight and eight Missed the wild card by a game. Baltimore, I said they would be 8-8, eight and eight, missed the playoffs. They went 8-8, eight and eight, missed the playoffs. So, again, uh, I was pretty good there. I'm going to agree with you on one of these teams and disagree with you on the other. And as you kind of threw it to me, we know which is which. Pittsburgh, they don't stay down for long. They dug themselves in that early 0-4 hole, which was shocking. And people were writing this team off as potentially a 4-5 win team that would mm-hmm. be picking high in the draft. They regrouped, almost made the playoffs. Had, you know, Antonio Brown not stepped out of bounds on that one play against Miami, he would have been in the playoffs, almost made it. It, it, had San Diego not got that la- uh, you know, that last second field goal, I believe the game went to overtime, as a matter of fact, against the Kansas City team that was playing its reserves. So and, they still almost made it. And they did earn a playoff spot, parentheses, Jerry Jones' uh, preferred version of the uh, NFL there, where he's saying that another two teams would make it so his Cowboys never missed the playoffs. Jerry Jones would get would award them that playoff. Um, I, I don't like that, expanding I don't the playoffs. Yeah. But 
I am. We talked about in the AFC East, a team moving up by default at being Buffalo. You know, not the top of the division, but just you know, be, mm-hmm. we kind of New England we thought would have a similar record, and then the other two teams their record would decline. So naturally, somebody's got to pick up some wins in the division. And I think Pittsburgh's gonna at least win one more game. I, I see them as a nine or maybe. 10 win team mm-hmm. but i have them actually winning the division okay now, if you ask me right now in february all right sort of by process of elimination i would have pittsburgh on top i just see them as closer to the team that finished eight and four than the one that obviously started zero and four and remember they had a horrible week one against tennessee where they they had all those injuries yeah. and it, it really put them behind the eight ball um that was where de castro took out pouncey with the one block i still don't know what he was thinking yeah. on that play and it looks like maybe it'll work with todd haley i'm surprised that we're having this conversation and Todd Haley's still there. Mm-hmm. I'm so, I can't believe it either. But it looks like maybe, hey, maybe him and Roethlisberger get on the same page. It'll be interesting to see what they do in the draft, Pittsburgh. They need help at nose tackle. Lewis Nix of Notre Dame has been a name bandied about. Or or some people say they need to go out and get one of these receivers. If you know a Mike Evans is still on the board somehow, at, whenever they pick 14 yeah. or 15, I could see them getting him. Uh, if not, they might go with Nix. So I, I kind of think by process of elimination, Pitts, I've got Pittsburgh on top right now. Baltimore's team that I hate going into this upcoming year. I, I think that you are about to see the worst year under John Harbaugh yet Okay. in 2014. There is nothing I like about this team at all. Really? Okay. There, there is not a single thing I like about this team. Well, If they draft it, if they, if they wind up getting Eric Ebron out of North Carolina, he will be the only thing I like about this team. The, the running back situation again. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we and that, that's bad. And, I mean, that could get real bad with Ray Rice. We, when we're, as we're doing this here in February, and we maybe catch this you know, a month or so from now, a lot could have changed. Mm-hmm. But that's bad. It was, and he wasn't good anyway. Right. Their offensive line yeah. is an issue that needs to be an, is an area that needs to be addressed. Their defense is not what it used to be and can't carry them. And look, I looked real dumb when Baltimore won the Super Bowl last year after ragging on them that entire time mm-hmm. going up to that game. Joe Flacco, it's always interesting, this debate. He got paid based on past performance, and I can't argue the front office doing what it did. That contract is going to haunt this team moving forward because they don't have the flexibility to bring pieces around him, and he is not a guy in the Aaron Rodgers, Brady, Manning, you know, Breeze, even Andrew Luck category that can carry a team. He's a at times has been a top 10 quarterback, but let's be honest, he's top 15. Baltimore is a team that I could see possibly dropping all the way down to 6 and 10. Actually. Wow. Okay. I do not well, like this team at all. I don't know if you agree with me on this or not, but the one progression during their playoff run that has proved to be durable, Joe Flacco playing at that MVP level was not durable. But to me, Torrey Smith turned the corner and become a legitimate number one wide receiver. And I don't throw that term around lightly in this league. I think he has become one of those big difference makers at the wide receiver spot. I think that helps somewhat. Ray Rice, on the other hand, who knows what happened to him last season, but again, the notion that that he would uh, go down from one single tackle from a security guard in a casino or whatever happened would be no surprise to anybody that saw him scuffling on the field last year. So, yeah, without without making light of uh, domestic violence, allegedly. Yeah, I mean, that could get real bad. I mean, that video did not look good, and and he may not be a Raven, so I just I, I don't like when I just think it's funny sometimes i just take a step back okay and take a macro look at a team and say okay what do i like about this team what do i not like about this team and in the likes category for the baltimore ravens there just is not a lot for me to write down as a fan i desperately want to believe you but i i just don't i i just see them as you know in a very very weak afc it, managing to slither into the playoffs it's hard to do what they did and they made the playoffs what Five yeah. straight years. Harbaugh's first. Five. Yeah. I know it was every year under and Harbaugh you kept until saying last year. Towards the end, this can't sustain itself. This yeah. can't sustain itself. Eventually, you were right. Yeah, uh, you're right. I mean, it was funny, yeah. but they were. You know, it's not like Seattle this year where okay, everyone loves the Super Bowl champion going to next year. I, they were not the best team, Baltimore, when they won the Super Bowl. In the league. They right. just got hot. At, it was that old. They right. got hot at the end like the Giants. We've had, we've had many teams yeah. in a row that have, that have done that prior to what Seattle did, sustaining it all year. I want to say before we move on from Pittsburgh, because we're going to talk about this again subsequently with other teams, one, one of the other ones being the, uh, the, 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 the essentially the, the Rooney Mara franchises, if I may uh, bring up the uh, famous actress here, of the Steelers and the Giants. Because last year, the way that they started the season, we talked about this. The 
first four to six weeks of, of the season, where, where you and I were just getting brutalized on our backs. If you look at the recent history of the league, I don't know if there's anything that's as flukish as that. The teams that started off horribly, that looked like they'd fallen off a cliff, that, that progressed to being at least decent by the end of the year and having respectable records. The fact that the AFC looked like it was much better than the NFC was dominating the early interconference games, and then by the end of the year, it was like, what were we thinking? The NFC is still way better than the AFC. So a little bit of the way we look at the Steelers is framed by that, because like the Giants, like a handful of other teams that are failing to come to mind right now, but the way that they, and I guess the opposite of that would be the Chiefs. The way that they started the season, like, oh my God, are the Chiefs going to be the next 72 Dolphins? <laughs> you know, come on, you know. It's very easy to overreact on the beginning of last year, and the Steelers are one of the prime examples of that. It kind of worked, because as we all know, the 72 Dolphins weren't very good, and were overrated. The perfect team, my friend. (laughs) The perfect team. Randy Savage and Kurt Henning, I'll tell you that much. (laughs) This takes us to the other team in the division that we've not talked about yet. Oh, I can't wait to do this. This is going to be fun. My Cleveland Browns, uh, my favorite team (laughs) in the league. (laughs) I knew that was coming. That's awesome. As I said when we were talking about the Dolphins, when we were doing our AFC discussion my two favorite teams are the most dysfunctional organizations in the league and my, my first thought on that is to shake my fist and say why god why and then i think back and i'm like and this is a shoot i'm like well gee i am frequently late for church and standing in the back because of that whatever so i guess it's on me if i was <laughs> doing a better job it would probably reflect better on my favorite football team so i will try to do better browns and dolphins on that but jimmy haslam's got to do his part and at this point it's staying out of the way he got those two pathetic ass clowns out of the way and Banner tell us Lombardi, how you really feel at least yeah he got them out the way farmer petten pretty darn good for and 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 they you they look like you could put them in the hall of fame right now compared to what we've seen in the recent history of this team i thought chud was fired unfairly i'm not slamming chud because he should still be here but petten and farmer in those roles if haslam just sits back signs the checks doesn't try to act like a southern fried dan snyder things may be okay at some point this is a team that has a lot of draft picks to use uh, prime spots in the draft this year excellent cap room that they have if they want to use it they should be poised for a rebound at some point i don't see it being this year i got them for six wins and if they're six respectable wins i as a fan will say job well done all of my picks are subject to review okay. in august next time when we when we're closer to the start of the season we do an official season preview but rick morris as you know i am no fan of the cleveland browns yes. despite living my entire life in cleveland i've you know it's not a very good franchise not a good product I'm not saying that they are what would you say though if i told you that this has the potential to be this biggest surprise in the nfl maker look if everything breaks right well, i mean i could see that uh, absolutely i mean the, the, the browns could be the surprise team of the league next year if every domino falls in the right direction i'm not denying that they will certainly win at least six and if they make the right draft pick they have mm-hmm. number four I could see him winning eight or nine and possibly making the playoffs. Okay. First of all, I want to address Chudzinski. He absolutely deserved to be hired. I, yeah. nice, nice guy. It's his dream job, whatever. Guess what? It's the bone lady job, too, and you don't <laughs> want her on that dream job. You don't want her on the headset. I'm going to tell you why. The Browns lost, what, their last seven games last year? Yeah. You look back recent years, every coach who ended a season on a seven-game losing streak eventually got 86. It was a year. team set up for 2014, yeah, not for 2013. But, you know, people Worst used, running game in the league people, once they got rid of Richardson. Well, it wasn't very good with them either. If Two you games, just look at history. Big Ken size. Wisenhunt, he's a decent coach, right? Very good coach. Okay, yeah, he got I'm a big clipped. Coach Wiz guy. Yeah, he got clipped from Arizona when they lost their last eight games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what they do under Todd Haley? That was a brilliant decision. No, Todd Haley, he left. He went to Kansas City. He was he didn't follow him. Oh, that's they, right. Bruce that... Arians got the job. Oh, oh, my yeah. Bad, my and bad. guess what? They I, did I was, well. Yeah. I was thinking he got promoted. Okay. Yeah. My, then my they, did, they did they pretty well. <laughs> Egg on my yeah. face. Okay. Your boy Jim Schwartz. Yeah. Two years ago, they lost their last how many games in a row? Oh, yeah. we'll hold on to Jim Schwartz. How'd that work out for you? You gag again then you have here's some other guys uh your your boy raheem stats are for losers morris they lost their last eight games they fired him okay every coach who ends the season on a long losing streak gets fired whether it be that year or the following year there was a precedent i had no problem with the jasinski firing at all now the way it was handled in the aftermath it did appear that the front office had no clue what they were doing so i will side with the cleveland fan base on that i just think it was hasty i i think i think what happened to him is the same thing that happened to him in 08 in 07 when it was pretty clear to everybody that it was his coaching that was carrying the team, not Romeo Cornell's, and everybody was saying, coach and waiting, coach and waiting. They slip on a banana peel in 08. Oh, let's blow everybody out and bring in this the, the toilet wipe Eric Mangini to run the team. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> it's a thing where... 
You hated the Eric Mangini regime. I did, with a passion. But it's a thing where, ultimately, the same thing happened to him twice. One bad stretch cost him his job when there was a long-term plan in place twice in five years. He's crazy for having come back and taken the job. I know it was under different ownership, but for trusting ass clowns in Berea, I guess Chud got what he deserved. But, uh, I think he deserved better. Stability is such a topic of conversation with the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. And it's often cited as the reason they always stink. Yeah. I'm going to say it's an overrated talking point right now. The reason that the Cleveland Browns have stunk since they've come back in the league since 99 has not necessarily been completely due to the lack of stability. It's, it's the choices. Yeah. Not, the, not, not the number of choices. It's the people who were empowered. Look, they've had, what, 20 quarterbacks since 99? Is that the number? Something it's something like, like that, that. Right. Yeah. They've all stunk. Okay, there's it, eh, Tim th- Couch never got a chance. Oh, well, yes, stop. Yeah, hop, okay, yeah. And who gave him his next chance? Nobody. He blew out his arm. That's not a fair thing to say. His career ended. Okay, well, what about all the other guys? How many other chances have they gotten? See, the thing is, if stability was the problem, we were just getting rid of these guys too soon, mm-hmm. you'd see them having success elsewhere. It's never been the case. Same with the coaches. But, all right, contrary to popular belief, this mm-hmm. team would not be necessarily be better if Chris Palmer was still the coach. Okay. <laughs> I mean, look at him. What's he? He's in the witness protection program for all I need. Your boy Paul Davis, all he's done is go on and fail at North well, Carolina. I Romeo Cornell, yeah. okay, he failed at another. He was given another job foolishly with yeah. Kansas City, and based on what Andy Reid did last year, apparently did the worst coaching job in history two years ago with Kansas City. But but a second year at Chud, the stability, I think. I think I think the fact that they haven't had stability. I Eric, think it's Eric a, Mangini, who you hated, got an extra year, and what did that have. get him? Shouldn't have. Okay, so why? Because you don't like him? Well, because it was inevitable he was going to get fired because he wasn't on the same page as Holmgren. When they fu- when they hired Holmgren, they essentially fired Mangini. They just time delayed it by 12 months. If I thought Chud had done that bad of a job, if I agreed with you, I'd say run him now. I thought the jury was still out on him, quite frankly. I thought it, it, it was it was the defense that fell apart the most through the course of the that season. And that was is- on, that's on Ray Horton. That's not on him. He didn't have anything to do with the defense. Okay, let's talk about this too. I thought both coordinators were overrated with Cleveland as well. Last year. I had no problem with them. Kind of people always say both Horton, it, it, Horton, just a quick point. Yeah, because you mentioned him. I'll, I'll get him out of the way quick, quicker. The Arizona defense got no worse after losing him, and as a matter of fact, may have gotten better. They also got additional personnel. Okay, parts last yeah, year. that's true. Okay, Honey so Badger maybe, at all, but no, you're right. Maybe you're that's right. Like, but you know what I'm saying? You're right. You're like right. maybe, maybe he wasn't as awesome as everyone thought. But right. here, I, I gotta go off on this Norv Turner. Right. Okay, whoever thinks is so good. Mm-hmm. Or as a co- everyone's like, well, you know, he's a lousy coach. That's accepted and certainly fact. But you know, he's a good coordinator. Why? Because he had Michael Irvin and Emmett Smith <laughs> twenty years ago in Dallas. Yeah. What has he done since then? Not a whole lot. Yes. So I had no problem with him getting the heave ho. Yeah. Although I'm not really a, I don't know if I'm a Kyle Shanahan man. I don't know that he, I am. Here's either. the thing. But let's just bottom line. Yeah. This. It all comes to what they do at number four in May. Number four draft pick. People want to have all these endless debates. Oh, we should pick this guy. We should be. I'd like it to be Teddy B. I do too, but you know what? You don't know. It, it all depends on what happens in the three spots above them, newsflash. Yeah. Here's what I think we know when the Browns pick. There will at least be one quarterback off the board, and Jadavion Clowney will be off the board. You, you think he will be? Okay, because there's talk about him dropping to four. Yeah. I, I got to think, think somebody's I, I think, going to trade off. I think that off, might though. be bored people talking. Somebody would, yeah. Okay. So if he's either, still there at well, three, somebody well, trades off. I know there's a lot of conventional wisdom that say Les Snead and St. Louis trade out of that number two pick. Yeah. I but, think. But can you imagine Clowney and St. Louis? Oh, my God. Yeah. It, it, you know, the, the it's funny, St. Louis doesn't think they need a quarterback, or on that later sports fans, mm-hmm. and positionally they actually don't need Jadavian Clowney as great as he is. I think that Jacksonville may actually take Clowney, even though that you know their quarterback situation is as hideous as the Browns. Right. But the difference is with Cleveland and Jacksonville, if Cleveland gets the right quarterback next year, they can be good. Even if Jacksonville gets a good quarterback, they're still going to stink. Yeah, they're, they're still a ways you, you away. Know. Yeah. So... I like Bridgewater because, to me, he's the safest of the big picks He is the safest. I don't know if his – I'm not a Blake Bortles guy. I thought if you look at what happened at UCF last Mm -hmm. year, he benefited a lot from yards after the catch. They Mm -hmm. call it yak. Yeah. Uh, In the bowl game against Baylor, uh, Baylor completely no-showed the game. I don't care what anyone says. The the defense thought it was a game of touch football. Right. If you look at – you or I could have made those throws. Sure. Uh, Manziel is such a boomer bust guy. Exactly. I I compare him – very much with Mike Vick, mainly I because I love making cross-racial references now. But well, attitude and skill set. You're absolutely yeah. right. But and just because Stay I away think from the dogs, Johnny. I, I think he could be 
really great at times, and at times he can be really bad. For instance, I was listening to Greg Cosell talked about that play that Manziel made in the bowl game mm-hmm. against Duke. I can't remember which bowl it was. It's, I think it was the Chick-fil-A bowl yes. uh, against Duke. Yes. That unbelievable run he had. He actually missed six reads on the play before he <laughs> ran. So, so that that's sort of Johnny Manziel in a nutshell. So... <laughs> He's like, yeah, you know, the other day, he goes up. He's like, the only thing is that he had like six open receivers on that play. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not going to jump off a cliff if they do take Manziel, I think. And then there's the – some people think that they could go Sammy Watkins at number four and pair him up with Josh Gordon. I'll and, be honest with you. I'm very intrigued by that. Brian Hoyer, I know it's such a Cleveland thing to do, yeah. you know, because he's a local kid. So he wasn't half bad. The other two could be thrown over the top. Right. Well, Brandon Weeden's manure. And Jason Campbell, who, by the way, is Brandon Weeden's age, has just had a, gotten a raw deal since day one in this league. But I, if the Browns get the right quarterback, remember this, they split with both Cincinnati and Baltimore last year. Mm-hmm. So they proved they could beat those teams. They looked okay at the beginning of the year. And then the they lost a lot of close games, it seemed. They got some bad breaks. The New England one comes to mind. Yep. A lot of people thought they got job there. I just think that when you look at the AFC and how weak it is, there is room for a non-playoff team from last year. We see this every year. Improve its win total by four more games. Yeah. We call it you know, the rule of four, for lack of a better name. There's about eight or nine teams every year who see its win total fluctuate by four. There's room for a team to improve its win total by four games and make the playoffs. If you look at the possibilities, it's really only Cleveland and Buffalo. Makes sense. Right. I mean, Miami's not going to win 12 games in the East. Uh, I would say the same with Baltimore. They're not going to win 12 games. Well, I'm going to say, uh, just in terms of the, the big jumps, I'm going to say Houston and Atlanta, my team. Oh, yeah, and we'll yeah. get to them, too. I mean, yeah, but those obvious. But there's going to be one that's less obvious, okay. and I think okay. it could be Cleveland. I think Cleveland could win eight or could nine be. games next year. I'll let you know if I'm officially going on that limb in August. All right, and to bring it full circle on this, it's just so hilarious because I, I go back to something that had been said on the show previously. I think it was the time that New England went to the Super Bowl, and we were talking about that, about who's their backup quarterback. And you mentioned Brian Hoyer, and it's hilarious because, like you said, local guy, and he went to Michigan State. And, and, and I was sitting there, and I'm as big of a football nerd as anybody, obviously. I'm like, I've literally never heard of this guy in my life. I can't believe he's New England's backup quarterback in a Super Bowl. And here he is. He's the incumbent as the Browns' starting quarterback at this point in time. Played very well in the brief instances that he was in there. Looked like a playmaker. I mean, that's he's got the intangibles of that. We'll see if it means anything. And I will say this also, too, uh, and because there's a little bit of a Facebook debate that uh, FDHC Senior editor Jason Jones has had with a number of uninformed trolls. I'll, I'll just m- mention this as my last point here. All the Pitts pukers out there that think that Antonio Brown can carry Josh Gordon's jock strap. Come back to me when Antonio Brown puts up the kind of year that Gordon did. Who thinks that? There's a lot of Pittsburgh people. No, like, Antonio don't. Brown's just as good. No, there are seriously a lot of people. I have seen this while out there a lot. There are a lot of Facebook GMs from Pittsburgh that are saying that they think Antonio Brown can do anything Josh Gordon can do. It's a horrible take. Josh Josh Gordon, I mean, I'm not quite... He was on a record-setting pace. Yeah. I mean, I'm not putting him there with Megatron yet. No, I'm not but, either. But, like, after Megatron... He was uh, the best like receiver right in the AFC last year. He, he was. was. the best. Now, was. it's interesting. Is it fair to expect as much from him next year? Because he was on a record-setting pace for a while in terms of yards per game. Honestly, yes, because the odds that he's going to have such putrid quarterback play yeah, 13 out of 16 games that's is true. minimal. It'll either be Brian Hoyer or it'll be one of the guys we're talking about from the draft here who is inevitably going to be better than uh, certainly better than Brandon Whedon and uh, Jason Campbell was up and down but predominantly down frankly Mm -hmm. so yeah he's going to get better play there so I I just wanted to bring up the Josh Gordon point at the end just to make sure he gets enough love because again like you said best receiver in the AFC last year will it be enough for my brownies next year I doubt it but yeah it probably will be better things I certainly hope you're right and it's much better but it will be better for them and uh, for the rest of the division like you said we're going to revisit this in August and we're going to see how it shakes out after the draft and after free agency. As we bring the show to a close, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, all clear channel affiliates, TNT, TBS, USA, UPN, Deadspin.com, YouTube.com, YTMND.com, MySpace.com, various blogs.
blogs, Fox News, CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, IamBoard.com, Billboard.com, Google.com, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, ESPN Classic, NBA TV, NFL Network, Sports Time Ohio, Athlon Magazine, Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, The Boomerang Channel, QVC, BET, The Spice Channel, Steno Notebooks, Manwich, Paper Mate Office Supplies, Waitresses, Strippers, Bartenders, Garbage Men, Janitors, Microwave Popcorn, The Writers of The Office, Scrubs, Entourage, My Name is Earl, Oz, Metalocalypse and the Boondocks, Aquafina, and The Periodic Table of Elements.